Good afternoon, one and all. This is a Power BI report which I made for the Superstore dataset. Uh, the aim of this report is to explore different marketing analytics concepts. And as you can see, this is the overview page. This is like a catalog page, I can say. It gives a bird's eye view of different things which I have made in this report. As you can see, it starts with an overview and it ends with the profit analysis. Now here I want to put a disclaimer that not all these reports report pages are direct that means sales analysis and profit analysis pages are like drill through pages you can say but still i have given the navigation now let's talk about the main components of the report since this is a superstore data set which contains about the information related to sales profit and all these things i have done an extensive analysis on this so the first thing is i have given a bird's eye overview let's go to the overview page you can actually go to any page you want by clicking either on the icon or on the name or you can also go to the overview page like this here directly. Now this is a back button it will take you back to the catalog page. Now this particular page there are no interactions it is more like a dashboard and here you can see all the important parameters or metrics. So here I have just made these metrics very very big large in size so that people can have a overview like at a glance view like what's exactly is happening so this is like the overall information you can say it is not classified under different financial years or categories or anything this is the overview of the entire data till now the next page is the markets page market analysis page here I have divided the data into like classified the data into various markets the markets are already defined in the data set but basically the aim of this page is to give a marketing a market analysis kind of view so the point is there are two things in the report market and also and also regions you can say and then there are also segments now here this can be kind of confusing so what I have done is I have, I have separately given the analysis for all these three like market analysis is separate, region analysis is separate and then I have also given a decomposition tree so that user will know what exactly is happening in the data behind the scenes. In market analysis, I have actually used custom tooltips. That means if you just hover your mouse somewhere, you can actually go to the go to one of the regions and if you hover, you will see a customized tooltip popping up. So I have used a donut chart and here you have three different segments which are present. Now let's talk about another thing which is drill through. If you right click and if you say drill through you can get into sales analysis or profit analysis. Another way is you can actually right click and you can say drill through here right sales analysis and profit analysis. Now here you can also ask questions related to the data. So this is like AI or ML feature you can say. So based on the question you ask the output will come. So if you ask for example, what are sales? So it gives information like this. If I say what are total sales? So it gives the total information like that uh, in different formats. Now when it comes to here also the tooltip works, customized tooltip. So I'll right click here and I can drill through the sales analysis. Now if I go to sales analysis, this is very straightforward. Here you have different cards and then you have different charts. And then you also have rolling averages. So rolling averages are kind of like dynamic in nature. That means, for example, if you select three, it means three months rolling average. If you say six, it is six months rolling average. So it's a dynamic thing. So from one to 12, you can select anything and it will show that rolling average. And the second line which you are seeing is the total sales. So normal sales versus rolling average sales. On the top, it is very straightforward. You have different charts. And since Power BI is interactive, you can click any one of them and then you can get the stats related to that particular item. Right. And these are all KPIs you can see. Now again, you can go back here. And again, if you right click, you can drill through the profit. Now in the profit, it is very similar to sales. But here I have added a couple of extra things. First is I have actually put a slicer on the top for financial years. In the earlier chart, in the sales analysis, there is already a separate chart which shows the breakup of uh, financial years. So you can click there. But here I have used a slicer. And these are all KPIs just like how you have seen in the sales analysis. Now if you talk about total profit, 
Here I have given three options for the users. Either they can look at the default profit or they can go with QTD which is quarter to date or they can go with YTD which is year to date. Three, these three options are available. And here also rolling average is dynamic. You can select 5, 6, 7, etc. Whatever you want. And this is about profit analysis. Now let's go to the region. Now regions is very similar to the markets. Here also you have different cards, KPIs and also you have uh, you have a nice tree map which is visualized. And if you want to go deep because some of these categories may not be visible like this, you can actually go and go into the focus mode and here you can have a very nice overview of different things. And here you have the top 10 products and here you have total sales by region and total profit by the region. So very simple one. Now let's talk about the decomposition tree. I think this is something which will help the end users a lot because at the end of the day people want to know where the profit is coming from. Now here you can see that each year profit is increasing right and also these are classified under fiscal year and fiscal quarter. These are not calendar quarters. So as per the Indian system it is like fiscal quarter will fiscal quarter and fiscal year fiscal month whatever you call it. The fiscal year starts from April and it ends in March and users can actually collapse the tree, expand the tree according to whatever analysis they want. Wherever there is a positive value it shows blue color and wherever there is a negative value it shows red color. So even that is also done. Now let's talk about cohort analysis. Cohort analysis is something which is very popular in marketing. It talks about frequency of purchases of customers. For example, if you talk about January 2011. And here you are seeing 22.6%. Now the meaning behind that is 4 months from January 2011 nearly 22.6% of the customers have purchased a product again. That means it is talking about the retention or purchase frequency of customers. Right. So this is like a matrix structure you can say. As you can see the structure will be like this because obviously when you are putting a matrix like this the structure will be half because we are talking about relationship between different months together right so from top to bottom and from left to right so because this is month zero that it uh, obviously the customers will be the same so it shows 100 percent everywhere and in the remaining places it shows percentage and whenever there is no reputation of customers so without any surprise it shows blank value and here i have applied conditional formatting so that it will be very easy to understand now let's talk about ABC classification. This is also very very important. Under ABC classification we are dividing the products as per the sales into three categories. Category A means they occupy nearly 70% of the sales. So here how do we classify is we go with the decreasing order of sales. So whichever products occupy 70% of the cumulative sales they will be classified under A category A then B then C. Now the aim behind this is it is very similar to Pareto principle. So Pareto principle states that you know like 20% of the customers bring 80% of the revenue that kind of thing. So we are looking at the products which are bringing the maximum sales or maximum profit whichever parameter we want to analyze. Here I have only analyzed the sales from volume perspective. So it's very simple this one. And now let's talk about RFM analysis. This is something which I absolutely loved. So while building the report I did not think of this. I thought it will be very complicated but it turned out it was not as complicated as I thought. It was very very simple. In fact cohort analysis was little complex to understand but this is like very 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 insightful and very very easy to implement compared to cohort. Now the idea behind RFM analysis is we are going to divide customers into various segments and different customers belong to different segments based on their RFM score. So RFM basically means recency, frequency and monetary. Recency means how recently a customer has purchased. That means did they purchase it just two days back or five days back. So based on that we will give a score. Let's say someone purchased so many days back then the score will go down. So we are going to give a score of on a scale of 1 to 5. So what I have done is I have taken simple percentile score you can say like 20 percentile I have taken for each category of score. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Right. Now frequency is 
very important because when you talk about recency, recency is all about when was the last time customer has purchased something. Frequency is all about how frequently someone is purchasing, right? So how many orders did they place or how frequently did they purchase? Now, if you see both of them, there is a small relationship. Someone might have frequently purchased something, maybe maybe two, three years back. Today, they may not be purchasing it. So in that case, what happens? Frequency score of that customer will be high, but recency score will go down. So that's why you have two different things. Recency is separate, frequency is separate. Now let's talk about monetary. Now monetary is all about monetary is all about how much a customer has spent. Now in this particular case, the more a customer spends, you know, it's like ticket size, you can say in this case. The more a customer spends per order, right? Then more their score will be. So in other words, we'll assign different scores for all these three things on a scale of one to five. So whoever have the maximum score, they are the customers who are very, very valuable. That means we can't lose them no matter what. And those who have low scores, those are the customers who are like, you can say, who are not very active. And also we don't need to focus much on them, right? We have to instead focus on how to in improve their improve their customer satisfaction or what is the root cause analysis why they are not purchasing our products those who are already having good score we need to retain them those who are having bad score we need to understand why they are not purchasing right so both are important if you think from that perspective so that is about rfm analysis right and here if i talk about the design aspect i have tried to use as much minimalistic design as possible and i have used very limited curves this is because I don't like to use too many shadows, you know, like I don't like to use a skeuomorphic design, uh, that kind of stuff. I'm not into that kind of thing. I want everything to be having like plain background, you know, like a white background, very less number of lines. So that what happens is the user can focus more on the information and less, the, less on the design aspect, right? And the design of this report has been a very big challenge because Main, the main important point which really kept me for very long on a pause was the color palette. So just to come up with this color palette, it took me like a couple of hours because I was trying and testing various colors. The default colors were okay, but I did not like those bright colors. I wanted something to balance between bright and dark colors. So that's how I came up with this color palette. Now talking about the report, the navigation part. So, like I mentioned, user can go here and they can click and it will take them to that particular page. And if they want to come back, there is a back button which is there everywhere. Now, what is the aim of this report? Like, why did I make this? So, this is kind of like my personal project. I always wanted to make a marketing analytics dashboard. Earlier, I focused more towards finance, uh, supply chain or HR, you can say. But now for the first time I made a marketing analytics dashboard and I really learned a lot of things through this project. I even shared this project on LinkedIn. I hope all of you like this project. And of course, you can just go to the reference section where I have provided all the reference links where you can learn more about some of these concepts. And of course, all those references will only teach you the concepts. But if you want to design a beautiful dashboard, you have to keep on doing trial and error. The only way you will learn design is by understanding certain certain design principles, like you know how to place icons, what kind of fonts you have to use. You have to research a little bit on the user interface, like where to keep what button so that users will be able to interact. And probably you can make a user manual, all these kinds of stuff, right? But at the end of the day, if you want to be good with design, if you want to be good with colors, it only comes from experience, right? it also comes from by looking at others projects so for example now you are looking at my project so tomorrow you might look at someone's project so just with observation some trial and error some formal and structured learning can help you to become better at design now there are many people who talk about various aspects about power bi like in general for example dax publishing to power bi surveys uh, you know like uh, modeling all these things now at the end of the day the most important thing is whatever logic you use right that's just developer perspective at the end of the day 
end user is what end user will be the one who will be using your report so behind the scenes you can use fantastic logic but if you really want to impress the end user the most important thing is going to be like your charts your visuals how you are going to design your dashboard what colors you are using what are your target audience and all these things so with this i am going to end my video thanks everyone for watching and please hit like subscribe or comment below thank you